So this video is going to show runout tolerance. And I also left the position symbol on there from the earlier video to show a comparison between how runout is slightly different than position tolerance. So we have a datum axis established on the larger diameter, and then we have two tolerances. The size tolerance controlling how big and small the diameter can be, and then a total runout within 0.1 relative to A. Total runout, I think, is best explained with the inspection method, which would be a dial indicator. So what I have is a V block that would mount the part on its datum axis, allow it to rotate on that datum. And now we would adjust our dial indicator till we get a little bit of pressure, a little bit of preload on the indicator, and then we would zero it out. Now, as we rotate the part, we watch that TIR, total indicator reading, and that total indicator reading can't be any more than 0.1. Now, with total runout, you're also going to want to check each cross section along here to make sure all of the surface falls within the 0.1 TIR. Now, when you think about TIR, what does that really create? As the indicator goes up and down, as you're rotating 360 degrees and moving along the length of that shaft, it creates a tolerance zone of two concentric cylinders that are also concentric with the datum axis. And now our surface has to lie within these two concentric cylinders 0.1 apart. This side picture, I think, shows it also here. Here's your datum axis here, your smaller inside cylinder, and the outside cylinder, the difference between those is 0.1. So now the surface of that feature has to lie within that tolerant zone. So worst case, what could happen? This controls location. It could be shifted down or up. So you see how that surface could be shifted only within the 0.1 specification. It also controls orientation relative to the datum because the surface could be tilted within that tolerant zone of 0.1 as well. And notice how it also controls form. If that surface were wavy, tapered, or in this other view, oval, that would be controlled by the runout tolerance as well. So runout controls location, orientation, and form all relative to that datum axis. Now, one big thing you need to understand is runout does not control size. So size is still depicted by the plus or minus 0.2 here. You could have a big shaft, or you could have a small shaft that can still have perfect runout. So this small shaft has perfect runout, this big shaft has perfect runout. So runout doesn't control size. You can make a big one, you can make a small one, as long as it runs true. Running true is runout. So if we take that big picture idea again, remember the four possible variations we can have, size, form, orientation, and location. So remember with position tolerance, we put a size tolerance and a position to separately control size and form from the orientation location. Now runout, you're still going to have a size tolerance on there, so that'll control size and form, but runout slightly overlaps. Total runout will also control the form. So these are almost the same symbol, position versus runout. Position does not control form, but runout does control form. So I wanted to compare position and runout again in a slightly different context here, this showing with perfect cylindrical features. So in this example, I have our datum axis A as the center of the larger diameter. And then we have this exaggerated position zone of 0.1 centered on there. So the smaller feature's axis is shifted 0.05 right on the edge of that 0.1 tolerant zone. Now I'm going to register our indicator on the top here and register that as zero. And now we're going to rotate the part and see how much runout we get. And we're going to evaluate how much position that would be also. OK, so zero the indicator here. And now we're going to rotate 90 degrees. Now as we rotate, watch this indicator is starting to drop from its placement. So our indicator is getting a reading here. Now when we go the full 180 degrees, we're looking at this distance, which is the diameter of 0.1. And that is how much this indicator has dropped as well. So this would read 0.1 from the zero location. Now we're going to keep rotating that 270 degrees. And now you see it's starting to come back up to the zero. Not quite there, so when we do a full 360 degrees, it'll come back to zero. So what is this TIR from zero to 0.1? That'd be a 0.1 runout, and that's exactly what our position tolerance is reading to. So what I'm trying to show with this picture is that if the form of the feature is perfect, perfectly round cylindrical things, then runout and position are identical specifications. Here's a good formula for you. 
that a position plus a cylindricity is equal to your total runout. So that means the location plus your form is what runout is really measuring. So in this example, I said, well, the form is perfect, so that's zero. So you, can you see how position and runout will be identical specifications? So whether I should use position or runout, sometimes it doesn't really matter that much. It's only small amount of form error anyway. So runout and position, very similar.